Just a quick note before today's episode. Since it was recorded, we have some good news. Barry's Amusements in Portrush has reopened. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Port Stewart in Northern Ireland's North Coast. It's somewhere I hold very close to my heart. So let's start the show. Well, I've been coming to Port Stewart since I was a baby. Um, my parents used to live here, and in fact, they're buried here. So, as I said at the start of the show, it's somewhere which I hold very close to my heart. And walking along the prom, even backwards like this, <laughs> which I've never done before, um, it just brings all those memories flooding back. Now, of course, in Northern Ireland, you can never be too sure of the weather and it's a bit windy today, so apologies if you can't hear me that well. I'm not putting subtitles up, at least it's not raining. But it does fill the lungs with absolutely fabulous sea air. This is what I remember about Port Stewart. So there's various things to take note about Port Stewart. And one of them is that, especially on a Sunday, people will park along the promenade here. And they'll sit in their cars for as long as they possibly can especially older people. In fact, some have actually said that they come along and just sit along here waiting to die. Oh, look at the bus. When I was a teenager, I was a bit of a boy racer and I had my Vauxhall Nova Sting. And on a Sunday night, Everybody who had a car worth looking at would come down and they would drive along Port Stewart Promenade end to end, turn around and go back again. There were a parade of, I would say sometimes hundreds of cars. And, you know, being an adult or an older person, <laughs> I really don't like sitting in traffic jams. But back then, that is what I came to Port Stewart to do on a Sunday night, just sit in the traffic. And um, you would, try to sort of like uh, have a one-upmanship on other people with whatever car they had. So I had a, as I say, I had a white Nova, but it had a sporty, a sporty grill on it and sporty spotlights and everything, um, even though it was just like a, a, regular, a regular Nova. Um, so I did my best. harbour and many people learned to swim here. I think parents way back in the day before health and safety matters were taken into account would just come down and chuck their uh, toddler into the water and uh, it was like sink or swim and they'd swim. The building that you can see in the distance is the convent.
Now you can't go to Port Stewart without visiting its famous ice cream emporium, Morelli's. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> The yellow man, ah, now that reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't me, by the way. No, yellow man is a toffee, well it's actually honeycomb, it says what it is. But you get um, yellow man at the Isle de Lamas Fair in Bally Castle though, on the uh, August Bank holiday. I think that might be a bit too sweet. What about nuts galore? We have a hot fudge sundae, knickerbocker glory, traditional, and Eaton mess, oh we made that on the show. There's an absolute array, but there is one which is jumping out at me. Which is? The strawberry wonder. Well, I want my fruit, you see. The nuts galore or the Nutella crunch? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, wow. No. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at this. Well, at least I'm getting my my fruit of the day, strawberry. Let's see how this goes. Mm, mm. Oh yes. Mmm. That is definitely Morelli's ice cream. Delicious. Mmm, delicious. You definitely have to come here for the ice cream. So we've come to Colrain. Let's take a look around. Well, the building behind me is the Colrain Chronicle, and that's where I started my first job on the 19th of March, 1990. Now, it was an absolute warren of corridors inside, and the building even back then had seen better days. But I'm happy to say that the scaffolding outside is an indication that things are about to improve. And indeed, there is a sign saying that there is a restoration project underway. Brings back so many memories, this. That door behind me is the door that I went through on the first day I started my first job anywhere and the receptionists they were always fantastic remember Margaret who transferred over to the Bally Money office at one point as well um, many happy times in there and I spent about four to five years at the Chronicle uh, split over two different periods now once you became a regular you went through the staff entrance which is just over here and that's it there. In fact, it does actually say staff only. Now, it wasn't just the Coleraine Chronicle that we produced. There was also the Northern Constitution and the Leader. Now, the Leader came out on a Tuesday and it was a free paper. And I had my own page in there which looked at media from across Northern Ireland. Um, and I got to go to many fantastic uh, shows and events thanks to the leader and the chronicle 
including a day out at BBC Radio Ulster and also another time um, to see the Kelly Show on Ulster Television. And at that Kelly Show, I was the first journalist in the whole of the UK to interview Boys Own. I remember it so well. Ronan was so young, so was I. Coleraine Town Centre. I remember it so well during that time when I started my job way back in 1990. Obviously I'd be coming out for lunch and I'd take a walk down Church Street and probably pop in to uh, one of the shops uh, for lunch or one of the cafes and get something. And uh, Corain was always the big daddy compared to Ballymoney uh, because it got the better shops and everything. So if you wanted to go out and uh, go to the Wimpy for example, you'd go to Corain. Well, over the years, Rain has seen its fair share of trouble, unfortunately. And in the 1990s, a devastating bomb obliterated the town centre, including the department store Moors. But it rebuilt and it is thriving to this day. This is the diamond and I can remember I was about seven or eight years old, so this was in the 1980s. Um, my mother brought me over to Coleraine one Saturday afternoon for the switch on of the Christmas lights and there was a very special guest. It was Tom Baker who was Doctor Who at the time. And I'm not sure if he actually arrived by helicopter or if he was just ushered in in a car, but I was convinced that he arrived in the TARDIS. Well, I think it's only fitting that we have lunch at Moore's here in Coleraine, don't you, Paul? Well, this is the River Ban and it's in Coleraine. Now, there's also something else here in Coleraine, right over there. It's my favourite store, Dunn Stores. Well, this is a relatively new Duns here in Coleraine. Um, I can remember way, way back in the day, there was a special little toy store. And I've just seen that the actual building it was in is being ripped down. Um, that's where I used to get all my Paul Daniels magic sets. But today, I'm after jeans and knickers. So, <laughs> let's take a look. Thanks for watching the show. Please continue to comment, like, and especially subscribe. Thanks! So we're heading into Port Rush now. Port Rush is known as the entertainment capital of the North Coast. And if you have a little look over to the right hand side over there, and the sea is the Skerries. Now the Skerries is a generic term for little islands, but these islands are actually called the Skerries. Um, little tiny islands. And you can also see in front of us, the golf course of Royal Port Rush, which was used for the Open in 2019. So as we drive into Port Rush, let's take a look around.
Well, Port Rush is awash with amusement arcades, and the daddy of them all was Barry's. I say was because it very sadly has now closed down. And it's somewhere which I remember from my childhood very much, especially for the ghost train, because it was the only ride that I would go on. Well, this building, which is now a factory shop, used to be Trax nightclub, and it was uh, you know thriving on a Friday and Saturday night. Um, I have to admit, I don't recall ever being cool enough to go in there myself. Somewhere I did pop into now and again for a drink was the Eglinton Hotel. Alas, it has closed down. Port Rush has a branch line to Coleraine. The sea can be rather fierce at Port Rush. Well, Sportsland was somewhere that I used to go to quite a lot, Paul. And you know something? I'm desperate for the toilet, so I think it's time to go and spend a penny. Nearly two. Okay. Oh. Oh. We've just come out of Phil's Amusements and there was a machine in there that did something really, really funny and you will be able to see it in one of our future episodes. <laughs> It was great discovering the North Coast again. It certainly was. And from a sunny but rather choppy Port Rush, it's bye for now. Bye bye.